Do you want to do a countdown? In five, four, three, two. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Procreate Podcast. I'm Tate. And I'm Brock. And today, what are we going to be talking about, Brock? Well, we're going to be going over basically what we have experienced the past week since our last upload and kind of the things we've learned and maybe things that we've been trying, maybe what hasn't been working out as much. Yeah. So uh, just our successes, failures, kind of what we've learned uh, the past week. Yeah, so what would you say is the biggest thing you've learned? Uh, well, a few things. First off, when you're creating a podcast, definitely audio check, yeah. or else the next day you're going to have to record everything. Yeah, and I... also have a better cameraman who doesn't put the camera at a tilted tilted angle. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, audio failure, my fault? <laughs> yeah. Camera <laughs> failure, your fault? Yep, that's why we're Ooh. such a good duo. <laughs> Two halves make a whole. Two halves make a whole, so we both made a very shitty podcast. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is very true. So I think that reflecting on what happened yesterday is that we were in a rush. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we woke up, um, we both kind of woke up late, and so we tried to rush it. Mm -hmm. And then we have to redo the whole podcast today because the audio was terrible, the yeah. picture was terrible, and that's yeah. what happens when you half ass a project. Yeah, and we're terrible, sorry. We are. So yeah. uh, kind of what else did we, uh, did we learn? Uh, what what did you learn for the past week of, of diving into your work? For the past week. Um, I've learned how to kind of set up a three camera setup on my own a little mm -hmm. bit. Like getting good angles, seeing what works, what doesn't. I think if anyone's learned more out of the two of us, it's probably definitely you because you've been able to play around a lot more yeah. with what we've been given. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> what, I've, uh, what I've been working on this past week and what I've learned is that I wanted to challenge the social platform algorithm, yeah. basically. I wanted to go in, try a bunch of different tags, try a bunch of different songs on TikTok, what's trending, what's being marketed together, what's being pushed out together, and how could I capitalize on that. Mm -hmm. So I basically went out and I would see something that was hitting really hard, uh, like a transition and sound and stuff, and so I put like transition in the hashtag and then i use the same sound that everyone was using for their transitions and stuff like that transition is where they'll like you know they'll have like a hoodie or a hat and they'll move the hat and then oh the person's underneath it this time or in the background or just different transitions to different frames so i tried that and i didn't see real success in that area yeah so i'm gonna keep challenging everything that i bring up today um, because I want to see if it's just a fluke thing or if it increases your odds because algorithm is, is a lottery ticket. Oh, yeah. It's you know what I mean? And uh, and you basically, you get more tickets the more people interact with your profile and the more times that, that you get likes and you get views mm -hmm. and people share it, basically. I feel like I learned that it's a lot more random than I anticipated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, just like whenever it comes to creating content, it's very it's very random. Mm -hmm. Like you kind of have to hope you hit the jackpot in a lot of situations, mm -hmm. and you have to find a wave. And once you find that wave, you have to ride it out until it's done, because there's gonna be a new bigger wave that you have to ride. Yeah, like whether it's YouTube, TikTok, even Instagram, mm -hmm. Instagram models. I know it's like like some of them will get a million likes on a post, and then the next like few weeks, maybe a month or so. It's uh, like down to like a couple thousand. Mm -hmm. So I think away. I think the main thing I've learned too is that it's about how much you're putting out. Like I put one every day, and I'm getting a follow. I'm getting around a follow a post on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I'm seeing in return. I'm getting a lot more on TikTok because that's just I'm my I'm catering a lot of my content to TikTok, and I feel like it's a, it's what's in right now. Yeah, more absolutely. people are on TikTok than ever before. I I feel that it's it's at my benefit, and the gaming market's not saturated on TikTok. Yeah, absolutely. I haven't seen very much of it, and I feel like I'm pushing the forefront of it. Yeah, that's great. One of the main things I'm trying to focus on is how do I get those 400 plus users that are on TikTok to go watch my YouTube video, and so that's what I've been really working on, and uh, it's it's quite hard mm -hmm. because I have over 400 subscribers, for instance. I have four, over 400 followers, sorry, and uh, I I only got on my last TikTok that I promoted my YouTube, please go check it out, it took me 14 hours to do, I only got 150 views, mm -hmm. which is significantly lower than my follower count, 
So that's a little interesting. I put YouTube in the description. I put YouTube as like the uh, graphic on the actual video. And I'm wondering if maybe putting YouTube in the description was a mistake. Maybe I should just have a, a Giphy that says YouTube, you know, link in description or something. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to try that out. Uh, I want to focus on my transitions. I want to get a few of my transitions up in videos so that people could see like, oh shit, that was cool. Mm -hmm. I really like the one where it zooms into a window uh, and the songs going along with it. I think that'll catch people's eye and that'll be, be really kind, of, kind of interesting. So yeah. uh, I'm going to try stuff like that and I'm going to I'm gonna use the picture to tell people to go to my YouTube and see if it won't get cut out of the algorithm because it does promote a different site. Yeah. So speaking of YouTube and using audio in your videos, didn't you get a copyright claim? On a video I did. Or I got a copyright claim yeah. on my, I think that not last video, but the video before last, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of it, if you haven't watched the video, please go check it out. I did, at the end, I did a little joke where my character got blown up by a friendly grenade. So it was a team kill. I played the outro to Curb Your Enthusiasm because it's kind of a popular thing right now. They claim that video so I cannot make any money on it, which is fine. I'm not making any money right now anyways, but it's still like in the future if my if my channel does blow up, that's a video that I will not be able to make any money off of. Yeah. And that's pretty interesting because it's only 17 seconds yeah. of a of a meme. Yeah. That literally has an, it's it's playing during my that you know subscribe like comment kind of thing and it's just crazy yeah and the weirdest part for me is that like you use 17 seconds of a clip from a tv show and then you use the whole four minute song yes by a copyright artist like it's not royalty free music it's so yeah. unreal you used his music in one of your videos and nothing nothing and nothing's nothing. happened so far i haven't gotten any claims on that one which i expect to and the point is is that i really love that song and i just want it in my video and i'm not making any money off of them right now and that's fine. You know, like, I didn't make that conscious decision that, like, oh, I'm going to use this to make money. I made the conscious decision that I love his music. It's worth it. I don't care. I want people to see it. I'm really proud of this video. Hopefully it helps get get me out there. And yep. then I'll worry about the copyright music later. And um, and it didn't get copyright, copyright claimed on it. And that's just so that's weird. So weird. I got, it's so inconsistent. Like a whole four-minute song versus like a 15-minute, like... Dun, 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 dun. Can't do anymore. Yeah, can't do can't anymore. Can't say any more of it. No, um, but I think that's just YouTube in general. It's so inconsistent with its policies. Like there'll be some content creators who will post copyrighted like music in their videos, and then someone will get the video taken down for putting copyrighted music in the video. Like there's a, there's a whole different like spectrum. It's just it's weird. Yeah. This is my problem with YouTube is that it, it used to be a place where anyone could create anything they want. Of course, mm -hmm. you'd have to like you couldn't post like someone getting murdered or like anything yeah, gruesome like that but like people could have a little bit more like vulgar humor and like things that could you know be considered as a little bit more adult but like now you can't swear in a video without your video being demonetized and mm -hmm. basically thrown out of the algorithm and it's it's crazy I, I i don't know i feel like a lot of like youtube creators have almost lost their like cr like creative right in mm -hmm. a lot of cases at least if they want to make youtube videos you know, and um, make the content they want to make. Like, now we have to, like, kind of go... If we want to make money off them, we have to kind of go buy a system of, okay, we can't swear, we can't use this music. Like, mm -hmm. that takes away completely from the creativity of it. I think the only thing I understand about that is, like, maybe the copyrighted music. Mm -hmm. And that's only because, yeah, it's someone else's intellectual property that I'm making money off of, technically. I don't know. But, to quote the late, great J. Cole, my man J. Cole, yeah. he said, uh, he said, you were inspired by the world. And why can't you let the world be inspired by you? Or something around those lines. I'll, I'll find the exact quote, but it was, it was like, dang, you know, like yeah. you're putting music out there, hoping that people are inspired by it, yeah. and then you, you, you sue them essentially, take away their right to, to creative, claim on a video because they were inspired by yeah, it. Exactly. And it's just, it's very interesting how art has changed, or, or let's say that. I go out there and I'm a I'm a professional dancer, and I go out there and I make amazing choreography to a for a, a song. Should that person get any money for their amazing choreography? 
I do. I think so. I think so too. And another ridiculous thing with copyright strikes on YouTube is that some content creators, if you put their content in your video, like for instance, if you're a commentary channel and you're making fun, like kind of making fun of someone or like dissecting their content mm -hmm. and saying what's wrong with it or like anything. What you feel about it, yeah. Yeah, what you feel about it. Um, if you do anything like that, that the person that you use the clips from their videos, they could very well copyright strike you. And the worst thing about the copyright system is that if you try to appeal it, you know who it goes right back to. It goes right back to the person who made the claim in the first place. So they can just be like, yeah, I meant it. Click. And then guess what? You had, Not only do you have a copyright like strike on your channel, you have a strike on your channel. Mm -hmm. And like three strikes, you're out kind of thing. Mm. And it's ridiculous. And so like that's it. that's kind of like the line we took, you know what I mean? Because this is what we want to do for our job. I enjoy making content and... For me, I feel like if I have to adapt that to make it work, I guess I have to adapt it to make it work. Yeah, because that's like we said in the first podcast. It's like it's all about kind of adapting mm -hmm. and like being flexible, being flexible in your community, like in yeah. what you're creating. Absolutely. Yep. Speaking of being flexible, have you learned anything new about your channel? Have you dove into your animation side of it that you were talking about the first episode? With the animation, um, I definitely have some really ambitious ideas that I want to um, – Kind of go with but i think that's honestly going to hinder my experience with it mm -hmm. and it's made me question not only like how much i want to do the animation and how much I'm, like how far i want to go with it but if i even really want to do it mm -hmm. like is it really something i would find joy in implementing to my videos and would it mm -hmm. work because like the original idea that i had for implementing animation was very simple things like just lines on screen and like little things to like um kind of exaggerate in a moment or make a moment seem more interesting than it is mm -hmm. Um, but then I started thinking like, what if I have whole scenes based around animation? Like, um, I had an idea where I was going to have, cause one of my dogs is very overweight and he has a hard time jumping on the couch. And so I was going to have a thing where like it went to his perspective and everything was animated and he like turned into Superman basically to fly up on the couch. And it's just, it's, it's a lot. And I really, I think I underest or I overestimated what I could do. Mm -hmm. and I underestimated how much time it would take because I tried to just animate a little pic thing of myself waving mm -hmm. and it took way too long and I like halfway through I felt like I was like mindless like I was just on autopilot mm -hmm. and but not in a good way like I feel like there are times whenever I'm creating YouTube videos and I feel like I'm on autopilot but like because it's so like like I'm just effortless like I'm doing it like how I want to do it yeah but this felt like I wasn't putting in the time effort and care into like what I was producing and mm -hmm. I don't know if I really want to implement it because I feel like my editing style alone will be different enough that, from mm -hmm. like other vlogging channels so we'll have to see uh, I'm definitely going to still try it and still experiment but depending on how far it will go is totally up to how much I enjoy and want to continue mm -hmm. animating so yeah yeah. So, so you're looking at cutting it back completely minimally or yeah. very minimally I feel okay. like like there, I've seen this one music video, um, if you guys haven't heard, it's called Ransom by Little Tekka. Mm -hmm. And in the music video, there's like little animations on screen. like, And if you see that video, that's basically how I want my vlogs to look. Mm -hmm. And like, in my mind. And so I definitely want to base it off of that. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to be very minimal with it. Um, okay. Even though I'm like, you know, I have a medium that works for, for I think, will would work well with animation in the videos. I heard you saying that you wanted to implement animation in a way in your videos. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that it's important to know, like, when you are, when it's going to hinder the quality of your videos. Yeah. Like, an idea is great uh, until it's taking over the quality and it becomes the only reason why people would watch. Mm -hmm. And I think that basically what you want to do is you want to create something that everyone can enjoy no matter what. And I think that it's good that you saw that it would be a problem and you, and you decided that it would be better to cut back and then see where that goes. Yeah, because my fear is that I would focus so much on the animation mm -hmm. that it would in turn hinder the quality of the rest of the video that mm -hmm. isn't animated. Yeah. And I'd end up putting in bits that I've already put in the videos before without noticing because I was too busy animating and I wanted to rush it, right? Because mm -hmm. I want to have a deadline with my videos. I want yeah. it to be like every Tuesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, and I honestly think if I animate, I can't do that. Yeah. So... Yeah, I get that. I, uh, I I was thinking about animating, and I'm still going to look into it. I'm not entirely sure, but because you set the example, like, don't want other parts of the video to um, to fall short because I'm trying to do something silly or do something different. So 
Uh, I did want to implement like a like a animated character for whenever I do my um, hey guys, thanks for you know stopping by. You know my little monologues to to thank everyone for stopping by. I thought about doing an animated character because I thought it'd be cute and it'd be fun. It'd be different. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Nobody does that, and I think that it'd be really nice to do that. Um, I. I'm not going to commit to that idea yet, but I, I am definitely considering it. We watched a video the other day about breaking down David Dobrik's style of videos and, and how he lays them out. And essentially what happens is, is it's a cold open uh, intro card, and then you're meet by the main content, an outro, mm -hmm. which is like the, the you know, buy my merch, check out my Twitter. Uh, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks to Sea Geek, whatever it is. And then the ending bit. And then I realized that that was happening across all boards on a lot of different things, like Game of Thrones, for instance, just using that as an example. You'd come in, you'd watch a small clip or a small, like, a two, three, four-minute thing where you're you're in the show, and then they would switch to the map of Westeros, which is their, you know, their intro card. And then you're in their main content, and then they end it with their little, you know... Uh, Game of Thrones ending credits and then there was the the ending bit which was what's coming up next week and that may sound a little different but it's pretty similar with the layout mm -hmm. of of things you know Marvel has an ending bit on you know after they run their credits and people stick around for it because yeah. they want to know and I think that that's something to think about is like how how come every single popular thing in the world has like a very similar layout and whether or not they don't have an ending bit or not their other things are pretty damn similar yep. they open up the show with cold open. a cold open you know something happens somebody runs in and sees somebody naked or something stupid and then you run the you run the intro to your to your show or your movie you know a lot of times movies are starting to come out like that too where you know you don't see the name of the movie until like three or four minutes mm -hmm. into the movie yeah it's like very common mm -hmm. so. and so it's it's pretty interesting that now i'm seeing a pattern of this and i think that the way my layout is right now is that i started open i start with my intro and then i i i run the intro song into my next clip and then i have my speaking like hey guys thank you so much for stopping in love you so much uh please like comment subscribe whatever 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 and then i have continued main content and then i i have my outro mm -hmm. and it's like what if i'm doing that wrong what if i save what if i take my two best clips that i'm gonna put in a video right and i put my main like my second best clip in the beginning and then my best clip at the end yeah right and then i do my intro card right after that insane clip Mm -hmm. And then I do, you know, my outro card, my outro before the end, before the start of that last clip. Yeah. And just see what happens. Because I've noticed that, like, you know, Shroud, he's one of the number one gamers in the United States. Mm -hmm. And his content is just, it's, it's consumed by people. They mm -hmm. love it. Yeah. And his layout is the exact same way. Mm -hmm. Cold open, intro card where his logo comes in, main content, outro, ending clip. And it's like... At some point, it's not just a coincidence. Mm -hmm. People are doing it on purpose. And so I'm going to take a look at that this uh, in the coming weeks and see how I can play with it. Yeah. See what kind of benefits it can give me. Yeah, it's funny. Whenever we started talking about that common layout, I started noticing it and more stuff that I started watching. Because mm -hmm. like right now, I'm rewatching Community because I just got put on Netflix. And I was like, oh, yeah, they just did a cold open. Oh, and that's the Community intro. Oh, that's there's the whole episode. There's the harsh cut to black that states like it's the end of the episode. There's the credits at the bottom of the screen with Choi and Abed usually mm -hmm. at the end of the thing. And then, so there it is. It's cold open, intro, bulk content, outro, and clip. Choi and Abed in the morning. I, I think that that's something I want to really, really dive into next week. Yeah. I want to I wanna start doing that as well. But I, I, instead of a, like a basic cold open, um, if you go to the Pizza Van channel and go to the second video, um, the like vlog two, Mm -hmm. um, there, the opening to that video is a montage of what happens in the video, yeah, and then just vlog too, yeah. And I love that's my favorite video on the channel, and I just I love it. Like You're I love trying to play with that idea, yeah. And I yeah. think for every video, I want to do like an in, like a montage in the beginning, mm -hmm. but instead of saying like vlog two, I want it to because I you can see this on his channel. He has a 
an intro where basically um, and he does a lot of transitions well, like this yeah go ahead sorry. um where like it says his logo and then the next clip is in the gun of his logo and it zooms into it, it zooms into and it. then at the end of the video you zoom out of the clip and then you're in the logo and so i want that zooming out of the logo to be like because like i want to have the number of what video it is on screen so like a big one or a big two or whatever mm -hmm. so for instance the next video the, the first ever video to come out on my channel will have a one on screen and then, and then it'll like zoom like but you'll see the montage and then it'll be like one right and mm -hmm. i want to do that as like my cold open yeah that'd be my intro and then have the bulk of the clips maybe me explaining giving some context for a bit that's mm -hmm. about to happen that's how i think i think i really want it to be is like uh, montage intro like little one thing mm -hmm. or two or three whatever yeah um and then me giving context for a bit that's about to happen and then mm -hmm. everything else kind of just happening yeah um and then I, like end with an outro and then but i don't know if i want an ending bit because i like because for me think like at least for me as a viewer i don't know if it's, this is anyone else but whenever a video just ends like and sometimes and like a ending bit can do this to me mm -hmm. where it just ends and i'm like oh that goes kind of like a harsh like oh i'm out of the video mm -hmm. now all right next thing and so i want it to be a little bit more of a gradual slope of an ending mm -hmm. um but then again i guess to increase watch time you want something interesting at the end so that way people yeah. stick around so it makes sense i was just thinking that you know with your idea that you wanted to do like basically quick shots of what happens in the episode hot ones actually does do that they'll have like you know, at the hottest points where they're like, oh my God, this is crazy. Blah, 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 blah. And then it's like, then they start the episode. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they'll end it with like, you know, you know, that person plugging their stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, they, they go and stand for the pictures and they're always like, oh man, that was hot. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. And then, so I think that there's definitely a market there, you mm -hmm. know, like it, it, it's something that's proven somewhere mm -hmm. that it could work pretty well. And I think that that's something that a lot of people aren't because like, let's say that rewatchability, right? You're going through and you're like, man, I really like that vlog where, uh, Tate ran and jumped off that building. It was hilarious. It's going to happen. And, uh, and they're, they're like, wait, I can't remember which one was it. Was it 10 or 11 or 12? And then they go and then in the first few minutes, they know which yep. video it is, you know, because mm -hmm. you do have that quick little yeah. montage of it. It's going to be like things. the hot moments of the video like, yeah. at the beginning. And I, I want him to have as little context as possible because, like, in vlog two, there's a line where we're just joking around, and um, and in the video, Caleb told me that there are people getting it on in the bathroom or mm -hmm. in the dressing room, and I was like, wait, as a YouTuber vlogger who gets crazy shit on camera, you're telling me people are getting it on in the dressing room, and we can like get that and be like, what's still going on? Like yeah. freak out. So we went back there. Caleb's like, oh, no one's here. I'm like, oh, you brought me back here for fucking nothing, you traitor, or something like that. And then he's like, they're underage kids. And then so, you know, he said, they're underage kids, what the fuck? And so we took that that line, they're, they're underage kids, what the fuck? And then we just put it at the beginning of the video with no context. So that we'd be like, oh, what, what's Tate doing? Is Tate a, is Tate a sexual predator? Mm -hmm. What? And then we, like, show the video. And it's, I mean, with context, I still look pretty bad. <laughs> but, um, no, so... I, I really like that idea because I definitely think it's going to keep people watching. I think with the changing it after you, you know, dive in and you check it out, it gives everyone an opportunity to see, you know, what is the difference really? Like, what are they doing that's working? And like, how can I start off on the best foot possible? And that's really what we're doing here in this podcast is we're trying to hammer out everything we possibly can so that the people that come after us can say, oh, you know what, I think that works better. Or even mm -hmm. just the fact that, like, for me, I I saw a video where somebody broke down what the main guys were doing, and then I saw a pattern. And, like, maybe in 10 years or 5 years when people are actually watching this, that it's not the same, but it gives them an idea where to start. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. where can I look to? Who can I try to model off of because you're not going to reinvent the wheel mm -hmm. you know what i mean like it's not going to be this revolutionary thing that you come up with that's going to blow people's mind it may be but it's very unlikely yeah and so why not start off on a good foot where you can you can maybe give people what they want not because it's what everyone else does but because it's generally 
what their attention span can can handle, what they are looking for in a video. Yeah. You know, and you got ten minutes yeah. to keep their their concentration. Like these people are doing it this way because it works. Exactly. And uh, they've seen feedback mm-hmm. in a positive way. Exactly. I think that there is a chance that you could do it better, and that I don't want to stomp anybody's creative thought process because I've seen stuff on TikTok where people lay out their TikToks in a certain way and I'm like that is the coolest looking thing mm-hmm. and like that is smart. So like I'm not no means saying that it's impossible, but I'm just saying that you should start. So if you're going to start, start by trying to see what what people are successing off of, mm-hmm. you know. And I think that's the real thing is like don't be afraid to try what other people is people don't be afraid to try what other people have done. Because it clearly works. Yeah. You know, don't no, don't be afraid mm-hmm. to just try it. Yeah. And with YouTube, it's interesting because people want to see something new and different, mm-hmm. but they also, like, want to see the same thing. So yeah. I think that it's important to to admit when, when maybe something you signed up for is too much and also admit when people are doing something right. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I think that – I think that – a big a big part and I know in the first video we said that some of the biggest thing is just being uh, consistent or being flexible I think that another big thing is to be aware yeah you know what are people doing and if you're gonna sit there and browse YouTube because that's what you enjoy doing you know that's fine but pay attention yeah maybe take some notes you know this is my favorite streamer why are they my favorite streamer? Mm-hmm. And how could I implement that in my videos? Or this is my favorite. And I think that that's a big thing. Is like Some of my favorite parts are the fact that you know, at one time I saw somebody who had an animated dog on their channel. And I thought that was hilarious. Mm-hmm. I thought that was interesting. They may not have been that popular and their gameplay may have been bad. But like, I thought it was funny. And like if their gameplay would have been better or if they put a little more work in their videos, I probably would be subscribed to them. Yeah. I'd probably like all their videos. But it was just, it was missing something. Mm. But I loved that part of the video. So I'm going to look into implementing that. And I think that, you know, don't be afraid to to, to change your stuff. Yeah. To, to be flexible. Yeah. But like, pay attention. Yeah, exactly. Like right now, I feel like everyone's kind of done everything. Mm-hmm. Like I saw a quote from Stanley. He was like talking to young comic, like people who want to create comic books and stuff like that. He's like, don't be worried about making an original story because everything's already been done. Mm-hmm. Like, as I remember, because I used to want to make comic books when I was younger. And even right now, I ha- I've had some ideas for some that I've been kind of brainstorming. And, like, as I would sit there and think, oh, I want to make this character do, like, look like this and be like this, I was like, wait, that already exists. Mm-hmm. And especially coming up with the names for characters, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, but they're everywhere. They're everywhere. But um, it's it's just something you got to kind of come to terms with. And it's not about really coming up with a brand new idea it's innovating on old ones because mm-hmm. some things are very outdated yeah like certain characters if we're talking about comic books or mm-hmm. certain like like genres of content they're very outdated mm-hmm. like in my opinion vlogging is kind of starting to get outdated and mm-hmm. i don't know why i'm jumping into this i don't yeah. know what i'm doing i'm doing it because i enjoy it mm-hmm. right and i figured animation and interesting edits and interesting t- transitions and just l- like video layouts would reinvigorate and maybe stylize mm-hmm. that genre of content creation i think when you're going through the internet and you're looking at blogs like a lot of them are very stagnant very i mean stagnant. they're very they're not they're they're not insanely interesting and i'm not saying every vlog has to be insane like not everyone can get a ferrari every vlog it helps but you know maybe we can make it just as enjoyable as other videos yeah. like I think that that's one thing that people are missing out on is like for me with the gaming side, I'm not not every clip's gonna be an ace mm-hmm. or a or a one v five or an mm-hmm. insane flick and blah blah blah. But how can I make those videos just mm-hmm. as interesting, funny, or entertaining as the ones that are one v five or amazing clips or whatever? And I think that that's where that's where you really have to use your brain power, yeah. like. Sit back, watch a clip a few times, think about it. Like, what's funny? What what, what do you think of when you watch it? Mm-hmm. Because, like, you think of it, ten other people are going to think of it mm-hmm. as well. And they're going to be like, oh, my God, that's crazy. I thought the same thing. And that's a subscriber. Mm-hmm. Because you hit something that they thought nobody else would think of or something like that. 
And I think that that's really where reaching as many people as you can will really help that. Mm -hmm, And uh, I had a guy comment on one of them that I thought was, you know, I put it together and I was like, eh, it's okay. But like he was like, this edit made me laugh on the floor. Like it was hilarious. And I was just like, that's great. I thought it was kind of funny. I thought it was all right. Mm -hmm. But like he loved it. And then he subscribed to me. And like, that's great. Yeah, Like I'll take what I can get. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that's where a lot of people are missing out is they're not capturing as many people as they can by posting to all these other platforms. And, yeah. you know, th- I'm not the only one that said that in the world. Yeah. You know, Gary Vee, I think that's every other word out of his mouth, mouth is post every platform. Yeah. Cre- uh, you know, and I think that that's where I got this idea for the podcast is that, you know, he wants he thinks it's important to document the process. Mm-hmm. And I don't think. No, I don't think anybody wants to see me struggle on Adobe Premiere trying to create a transition for f- five hours. Mm-hmm. But I do think that there's value in what we're doing here yeah. where we hammer out what went wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, my very first transition video ever, I spent hours, 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 hours on doing these transitions because I had to create green screen effects out of uh, text inside of Adobe Premiere premiere and copy and paste them to fill up an ACOG or a circle on the screen so that I could transition through that green screen onto the next clip. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it takes a fraction of the time if I would have got After Effects. Like it would have taken, that that 14 hour video would have taken me probably six hours if I'm being realistic. I think that it's it's important to to try to document the process the best you can or the, the most comfortable way you, yeah. you can because I don't feel comfortable sitting there and taking criticism for five hours because I don't know how to use Adobe Premiere. And that's fine. I don't mind criticism, but like that's just where I feel a little uncomfortable. Yeah. And so instead of doing that, I decided to do this. And know, know who you are. Know what your limits are. Mm-hmm. Know what you envision for your future and stick to it, man. Yeah. You can do it. Absolutely. You can do it. 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 You just got to take the time and pay attention. Yeah. Because the world is talking to you. You just got to like, what is it saying? Yeah. What are people enjoying? Pay attention. What's out there? Mm-hmm. You know? So do you have anything else to add? If you're creating a lot of content like I am, especially during times such as this, um, you have to, like, whenever I started trying to film during mm-hmm. quarantine, I was like, I want to like... There's nothing going on. Like I'm just, it's just me by myself, and I was gonna, I thought it was gonna feel forced if I tried to do things, but then I realized that a lot of the stuff you do in your day to day is because you make it happen, mm-hmm. and so I'm like, this is no different, mm-hmm. and like we've come up with a lot of really good ideas that we're gonna start filming, um, here pretty soon in the future, um, that we just came up with and we're like, okay, this will be fun to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess my point is that, um don't wait for things to happen make it happen Mm -hmm. and that's not just for getting content that's for starting posting any like in the first Mm -hmm. place like just do it there's nothing holding you back if you think you're not interesting enough i bet 10 bucks right now on the table that there's someone out there that'll be like i want to watch this person every day yeah because there's something about them that intrigues me and makes me interested moral of the story um do what you love do it the way you want to do it and just be aware of what you're like be aware just be aware yeah yeah i think that's a pretty good way to be aware like we will be aware that we are running out of topics and we are uh getting to the end of this long podcast so uh, i think that uh next week tune in because we i will be going over kind of a little more of the algorithm and what i've found is working uh, two, I will go over a little more of After Effects because I've really been spending a lot of time researching this last week and this upcoming video when I have a lot of After Effects stuff or I'm going to, I'm going to try to implement as much as I feel comfortable implementing. Mm-hmm. So I'll be able to talk about, you know, what I've learned and, and kind of how I, I found the finished product went. Uh, and then, uh, also just like I'm going to rework my layout. So I'll, I'll see how I felt about the end product and how I feel like it did out there on the market so uh anything you wanted to add as we uh, close out um nothing much just find your wave and write it out find your wave and write it out yeah absolutely put that on a t-shirt put that on a t-shirt right now bro create go do it bro create find your wave and write it write it out right write your wave
ride wave. Thank you guys so much for stopping in. Uh, if you enjoyed, please like the video. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe, follow us on the uh, audio-only platforms, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Thank you guys so much for stopping in. Absolutely.